Hey guys, welcome back. It's Mrs. Peterson, that lady who teaches art. And today we are going to talk about another element of art called texture. So at the top of your paper, please put your first name, last initial, and your class. And then like I said, our special word is going to be texture. And I wrote most of the word for you right here, and I just left out one letter, the beginning letter, t t texture. We're going to put a T right here. Then I created a picture right here for you of a star that has a texture on it. Now, if I just touch it with my finger, it feels smooth, but it looks like it would feel bumpy, maybe like alligator skin. The word texture means how something feels. So we're going to write feels. F E E L S. One more time. F E E L S. Texture is how something feels or looks like it might feel if I touched it. This looks like it would be bumpy, but it's not. All right, down here at the bottom of the page, we're going to talk about some different word or some different objects that have different textures. So first I have a picture of cotton candy. Cotton candy feels, and I was thinking fluffy. So I want to think of the word fluffy and what's missing. Fluffy. It's actually two F's that are going to go right here. F, F for fluffy. Cotton candy feels fluffy. Next, I have sandpaper. I don't know if you've ever felt sandpaper, but sandpaper is a um, something that we use to sand off um, like splinters from wood, so wood is really smooth when we use it. So sandpaper feels, I was thinking, rough. And this is weird because sometimes we think rough is spelled R-U-F-F, -F, like what a dog barks, that's a rough. But this kind of rough is actually spelled R, and then I have the O-U-G-H right there for you. So put that R in for me. Sandpaper feels rough. The next object I have is a glass made out of glass. And glass feels smooth. So what two letters make sm, sm? It's going to be S and M to make smooth. Glass feels smooth. Next, I have a picture of a sponge, number four. A sponge feels something that ends with ish, ishy. I was thinking squishy. So squishy starts with three letters, S, Q, and U, squishy. So on your lines, you need S, Q, and U to make squishy. A sponge feels squishy. I guess if it's wet. Sometimes if it's dry, they can be kind of hard. And then the last one on this page, it says a golf ball feels bum, and I'm missing some letter here, bumpy. I'm missing an M. Bumpy. A golf ball feels bumpy. All right, turn to the back when you're done. And now we are going to use our pencil to create some different textures. The first one is tree bark. So instead of drawing a little tree right here with all the leaves and everything, I want you to draw just like I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw some mountains pointing up and some that look like they're hanging down from like the top of a cave. Around those, I'm going to go really dark right over top of that with just a zigzaggy line. Because bark usually has a lot of dark colors to it. The trees that we have around here, there are ash trees that are white, but they still have a texture to them. I'm just going to trace over my lines with a really dark shade of my pencil. Then on the top of that line, I'm going to go with another shade, just a little bit lighter, but a zigzaggy line around the top of that line, and I'm going to add one on the inside. Okay, I'm going to do that to the one up here too. I'm going to go on the inside, just covering up more of that white, tracing the outside of that line. And then let's do it one more time. Let's go just a little bit lighter, filling in all that spot. And then in the part that's left, I'm just going to shade it super light. And that will be my tree bark. And if you think it looks like you're missing a little, you could just add a little dark to the corner if you want to. All 
There's my tree bark. All right, Legos. Legos, we know that they have circles on the top, but when I look at them from the side, they actually look like ovals. So I'm going to have you draw two ovals next to each other and then three going down. Starting to kind of look like a Lego. Now I want to make these look like they're standing up, so I'm going to give a little line on each side going straight down. Because the Lego has an indent on the top, we're going to put just a little shadow right at the bottom in the center of each of our little um, circle parts, or oval they look like. And then if I really want to make this look realistic, I'm going to give myself just a little bit of a curve on this side, just a little bit of a curve. Make it look like it's connected to the Lego there. And then I can shade my Lego if I want to. Just doing some quick diagonal lines lightly across. Okay, brick. This is one of sixth grade's or first grade's favorite ones to make. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to draw a line right through the middle of this. Shoop, straight across. Not quite, mine's a little bit low, but that's fine. Then go above that, and in the part that I just made, I'm going to draw a line right in the middle of that, straight across. And then go back to the middle and divide the bottom part in half, and I'm going to draw another line straight across. Okay. Now, in the top row that we made, I'm going to put a line right through the middle and stop. I'm skipping this one because bricks go every other. But I'm going to think about where that line would go, and I'm going to do it in the third row. Okay, starting to kind of look like bricks. Now I'm going to divide this space in half right here. And I'm going to go in between and draw straight down. And I'm going to take that line and continue right here, straight down. Same thing on this side. I'm going to take this space. I'm going to divide it in half and go straight down. And then wherever that line was, I'm going to skip the third row and go to the fourth row. Now bricks... Some are painted all white like that, but a lot of times I see bricks where there's a bunch of different shades um, of a similar color. So I want you to pick two bricks and color them super dark and they can't touch each other for today. So color two bricks super dark. As dark as you can make your pencil go without ripping your paper or breaking your pencil. After that, I want you to pick two that are going to be dark gray. Then pick two that are going to be middle gray. This is just regular pencil pressure. And then the rest can be light gray. And there we have our brick wall. Okay, next we're going to do a feather. I'm going to have you go straight down the middle. And then this is the weird part. Start up here in the corner and go at a diagonal line down to the middle. Now, from there, I'm going to go up at that same diagonal. And I'm going to go down at the same diagonal. I have one side of my feather done. When I get to the other side, I'm going to start up at the top corner, go down to the middle, and then I'm going to fill in the top, stand, staying on the same diagonal. If you need to turn your paper, that's just fine. Now we've created 
four different textures using our pencil. All right, you guys, I can't wait to see what you create.